Michelle, we've raided the yeah. Almaviva wine cellar mm -hmm. <laughs> and we've got yeah. some different vintages lined up. The first one's from 1998, but you actually started, or Almaviva started making wine here in 1996, um, which we also tried, which is delicious. But the reason we've picked the 1998 is because it was a slightly more unusual vintage, which mm -hmm. is perhaps more reflective of this year. So what was it like in 1998 and how has the wine surprised you that it's mm -hmm. evolved over mm -hmm. time? Well, in fact, uh, uh, in this place we normally receive uh, the rainfall of about uh, 300 millimeters of rainfall a year. And in uh, 98, which was a year of, uh, of El Nino, uh, we received about 800 millimeters of rainfall, so, but in winter. Lots of rain in winter, but the rest of the year was quite cool. Uh, summer was cooler than usual, and we also had a bit of rain in, in April. So globally, we didn't reach uh, the complete ripeness uh, we used to get. Uh, it was probably not considered at the beginning as a wonderful vintage, uh, more a lower vintage in terms of ripeness, concentration, complexity. But in fact, when you taste the wine after almost uh, 18 years, uh, uh, you, know, you can see that the wine is still there, it's still alive, showing uh, the wonderful complexity. Uh, probably not with the same level of ripeness than mm -hmm. others, but in terms of character, and uh, it is still uh, there and showing the, uh, the the great potential of the place, even the the complicated uh, vintages. A bit like uh, this year, 2016, where it, it's also it, an El Nino year, year with it's El Nino year with probably more rain in in uh, during time of harvest. So it's quite interesting to to show that uh, that we can do uh, great wines, mm. uh, uh, different wines, but uh, in in different kind of uh, climatic conditions. And this has got a beautiful finesse. It's lovely, it's got a nice mm. acidity. It's a really beautiful wine, mm. even though it was a different vintage for Puente Alto, which you describe as a slow terroir or a very slow ripening mm. region. Mm. What, is the, what are the conditions normally like here? You know, normally, it's, a, it, it's always a late terroir. That means that we start budding later than, than in many places of the Central Valley, about two weeks later. Uh, w uh, the same thing for flowering, same thing for the, for the harvest. So that means that finally, uh, will um, the, the, the grapes will ripe not on the peak of the temperatures, but when the temperatures are starting to go down. So that means uh, uh, certain conditions that that will make that the grapes will uh, ripe slowly, will keep freshness, will keep a good acidity, and uh, as normally we have no rain in the, during all the ripening process in, a, in March, April, May. Uh, we will be able to wait till the final ripeness, but always keeping freshness. Mm -hmm. So one of the main characters of this terroir in a normal year will be to be able to produce ripe fruit, but fresh at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent, which is more what we find here in the next one, which is 2007, mm. which is considered one of the great vintages mm. of Puente Alto. Um, and you have a lot more of that fruit coming through mm -hmm. as well from the ripeness mm -hmm. and also um, the freshness. You used to make wine in Colchagua, which is further down in Chile and, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people would think the further south you go from Santiago, mm -hmm. the cooler it gets. But mm -hmm. what is the difference that you find in terms of temperature here in, in Maipo compared mm -hmm. to more central valley regions mm -hmm. in, in Colchagua, mm -hmm. for example? In fact, uh, yeah. yeah, normally we should expect uh, 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 you know, uh, warmer conditions when you go north, uh, but in fact uh, the, the effect of the, of the Andes, of the mountain, is stronger as finally we have uh, lower temperatures uh, uh, because of the proximity to the Andes that will finally uh, help us to make uh, uh, this kind of quality of uh, of, of Cabernet Sauvignon mm -hmm. grapes. So it's strange, but in fact, uh, the Andes uh, 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 have a stronger effect on the final climate of the place. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why I guess people say here in Chile, don't think north to south, think 
east to west. Yeah. <laughs> and this one's yeah. definitely showing beautifully as, as one of the more yeah. rounded vintages. And what do you think is the typical style that you look for in Alma Viva or the expressions that you find from the blend that you make? Well, we, you know, the Alma Viva, it is a classically a blend of, uh, of Cabernet Sauvignon for probably two thirds and three quarter of the wine. Carmenere will be 20, 25 percent, and we have also some um, some Cabernet Franc for three, eight percent, and the small touch of Merlot and Petit Verdo. So uh, basically, the, the 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 quality of the Cabernet Sauvignon in terms of fruits with lots of cassis, lots of uh, red berries, and uh, a nice uh, uh, a nice uh, texture will be uh, finally uh, balanced by the smoothness the roundness of the Carmenere that will give probably a certain creaminess to the mm -hmm. final blend, uh, adding some complexity in terms of flavors uh, uh, and also in length with, uh, with the Petit Verdot and, uh, and, uh, and the Cabernet Franc. Excellent. Mm. And this last vintage that we're trying is 2013, which is the one that's in the market right now and, and, and representative also of very much the, the mm. modern vintages of Alma mm. Viva. Um, and Carmenere, as you said, makes an important percentage of that, mm. but it wasn't originally thought to be Carmenere, was mm. it? You planted it, mm. or the winery mm. thought the plants were Merlot to make mm. a more Bordeaux-style vintage. Mm -hmm. What is it that the discovery of it being Carmenere, how has that changed your, your mm. methods in terms of winemaking? Well, you know, to the beginning, yes, in 1996, it was considered more as a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and, uh, and Cabernet Franc, till you know, we realized that uh, like uh, many uh, uh, Merlot in Chile, yeah, it was Carmenere. Uh, instead of, you know, of course, we, we, we try to plant real Merlot uh, to see what could be, but in fact, uh, uh, we just realized that we could have uh, the better result uh, keeping using Carmenere for the, for the roundness, for the, for the creaminess effect it brings to the wines, and also because the, you know, you know, the quality of the of the of the Carmenere is clearly the you know, uh, you know, uh, higher than the quality of the of the Merlot. Mm -hmm. yeah? So it's uh, it's um, it's a border blend. It's a classical border blend. If we consider that uh, the Carmenere was also mm -hmm. uh, the, the variety from Bordeaux, but in fact uh, it has of, of course a, a special uh, Chilean touch with this. Uh, with this uh, special variety uh, well adapted to Chile mm. and uh, that uh, probably play the roles of the Merlot in Bordeaux uh, in, a, in a different way, eh? Pro probably in terms of uh, you know, it brings probably more color but it brings this roundness that, uh, that level the, the the angular side of the of the Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm -hmm. mm. Excellent. And as a French winemaker, mm. um, what can you say is a big difference that you find between these varieties? I mean, Cabernet Sauvignon is obviously your speciality mm. here. What is the big difference that you find that the climate, the terroir, the place mm. really gives it um, compared to mm. a classic Bordeaux blend? Mm. I would say that uh, the first difference is with the with the classical conditions, the, the classical climatic conditions mm -hmm. we have, uh, it will be quite uh, easy to, to ripe well. Uh, that means that uh, the, the Cabernet Sauvignon will, uh, will naturally ripe you know, well in, uh, in, uh, in Puente Alto, keeping this, uh, this freshness, which is not uh, always easy so, some years in, uh, in, uh, in France uh, according to the conditions. Um, and uh, of course they will show probably differently in terms of tannins will probably have a certain sweetness in the mm -hmm. tannins here that uh, which will not be so so, so marked in, uh, in in Bordeaux they will probably have less uh, so sometimes dry leaf mm -hmm. uh, flavors in the old wines but but in terms they will have probably a certain uh, generosity that in the wine uh, that will be a prex by this, uh, by this uh, special uh, uh, climatic conditions, but always keeping this freshness because of the proximity of the Antis. Yeah, mm. Excellent. And I mean, is that the combination that you think has made Puente Alto one of the most 
renowned spots in Chile for high quality mm. wine? Do you think it's the proximity to the Andes or, or what mm. do you think is that makes this place particularly special for Chile? Mm. Yeah, there's something, there are the few details that we can observe, that we can see, and there are probably others that are more, <laughs> more difficult to, to finally uh, identify. But that's true that this combination of freshness and, and ripeness is a, it is a great point. But of course, as a result, you know, the quality of the, of the tannins of the Cabernet Sauvignon in terms of elegance, finesse, and roundness is very particular to this place then the way it comes from it will be always difficult to to say but uh, as um, mentioned at the beginning also you know, we are in a, in probably one of the most uh, evaluated uh, terrace of the of the maipo uh, with um, more complexity a certain percentage of clay um, you know, more um, you know, to, the kind of soil that uh, that helps to to make this level of uh, of finesse in the wine. Mm. Excellent, mm. and it's delicious. And these are just three of the wines that we've mm. been trying. Mm. But it shows the great ability of, of wines of this quality and, and from this region to age for way over twenty years. So we've got a lot to wait mm -hmm. for. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm. <laughs>